everyone, welcome back to part 15 of The Sims 3 Celeste. So as you guys could see by the introduction, Queen Helen finally knows everything, pretty much everything to do with Celeste and her son. So that is a huge, huge, huge deal. I have no idea what she is scheming. Neither does Celeste or Orion. They have no idea what the Queen is really up to at this point. But now she does know everything, so that is going to be quite interesting. So Celeste, she is actually heading over to the observatory because she does want to search for some stuff. She wants to search for the records of this crashed ship. She has no idea what this ship really is. All she knows about this um, crashed ship, um, she can actually make the key for the ship. So that's going to be pretty, pretty exciting. I think we'll do that probably in the next part. And she can also transmute this space rock as well. We can consume the space rocks, so I have no idea how to really do that. I guess we transmute it. I have no idea, but yes, yeah, so we can do that as well. But yeah, she knows this crashed ship. It is a property of planet Vesna. That's all she really knows about it, so she is quite curious to know more. And yeah, this ship really was like, I guess it's like, hmm, maybe like 20 years old. Yeah, 20, 25 years old. So, so yeah, it crashed quite a little while ago, a few decades ago, and I bet there are some mysteries inside of the ship. So, Celeste is very, very, very curious to know what they are. So yeah, we are going to do this. I'm just going to let everyone pretty much just do what they want. But first, I do want her to transmute the space rock. Does this mean that we are eating it? I have no idea. How does one eat a space rock? <laughs> Jeez, this is so crazy. It looks so cool though. I mean, she is spinning it around kind of like a basketball, pretty much. It's not filling her hunger. I don't think she's eating it. <laughs> I have no idea what this thing is. I don't play with aliens at all. So that is one thing I do appreciate about this Let's Play in particular. Oh, I made... It made it very expensive. That's kind of cool, but how do we eat it though? How do we eat it? That is the million dollar question to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, one thing I really do appreciate about this Let's Play is the fact that it's letting me do things that I normally would never do. And I love that Orion is at the base camp. He is further talking with all of these humans. There are tons of humans here. So yeah, Orion, he actually came to terms with the fact that humans really aren't so bad. And he really does want to make some sort of peace between their kind and the humans as well. So so yeah, we're, we're going to imagine that maybe the other night after Orion and... Um, Absol uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I was about to call her the princess, but, but Celeste isn't quite the princess. Not just yet. But yeah, after they were woohooing in bed, perhaps they were having a nice little talk about, about this planet and saying how beautiful and how friendly everyone here were. And yeah, so maybe they were deciding to come up with some sort of plan once they go back to Vesna to really try to make the both planets bond, if that all made sense. <laughs> I'm all over the place at the moment. But yeah, so Ryan, he is headed over to the um, robot shop, I guess. I really do want to design, um, a little robot, but I have no idea how to do this. <laughs> I've never had an actual robot in our household ever. This guy is super cute. I really like him. I think we'll just buy one, to be honest. I'm not too fussy about making one from scratch. Oh, this one is super, super cute. Oh my gosh. She is adorable. I mean, it could be a boy, but I'm assuming it's a girl. <laughs> How does one tell the gender of a robot? Yeah, that, that's a difficult one right there. But, oh my god, that one is so cute. I think we might go with this one. Oh, it is so cute. It's so cute. Yep, yeah, we're going to go with this one, I think, because... Yeah, maybe we should give this robot as well to Celeste. I think that would be a very nice... A very kind kind of gesture for Orion to do for Celeste because once Celeste does go back to Vesna, once she does cure her mother with her disease, her mother, you know, she's an older lady as well, so she might need some help around the house and yeah, maybe this little robot can help things out with Celeste and her mother. So, so yeah, I think this is very, very, very sweet of Orion. So yeah, here is Celeste's opportunity and we do need to learn a little bit more about the spaceship to figure out a way how to enter it because as far as Celeste is concerned, it is it is sealed shut. We could excavate, we might do it later, but that is not going to be our main priority as of now since we already do have the missing pieces. 
Okay, so this one, ooh, I'm really liking the traits. Yeah, it's it's efficient. Yeah, solar powered. It's great. I think we'll definitely go with this one. 4,520 simoleons. That's a pretty hefty price for a little robot, but it's so cute. <laughs> I think Celeste will love it, to be honest. And I really did think it's sweet of Orion to want to surprise Celeste and to do things to make her as happy as possible. Because I think Orion, he really does know that Celeste, she had a hard time in life with her mother being so sick all of her life and just ne never knowing her father and just being shunned, basically, by all of the Venetians. Oh my god, our robot is so cute. Sim, I kind of like the name Sim. That is kind of cute, a little bit generic, but I kind of like it. <laughs> but yeah, so he really does know that she had a hard time in life and he just wants to really make her happy, to be honest. Beep boop. Prince Orion, my primary functions are as follows. Yes, you are a very nifty robot indeed. Yep, very self-sufficient. <laughs> I think it's so cute though. I mean, I love I love all of its traits and I think it looks so, 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 so adorable. I think Celeste is going to be so happy. And hopefully it will definitely bring a smile to her face. But yeah, like I was going to say earlier as well, um, the thing I really do like about this Let's Play is that I get to do things really different, I guess, because normally I never ever do any Into the Future related stuff. I never explore any of this. I don't ever do the plum bots or anything, so it's a pretty cool chance to, uh, we, we can move who in here? What? Say what? <laughs> okay, we definitely have to try that later, you know, for science, of course. That is a good excuse. Yeah, whenever you try to sleep with someone, just say that you want to do it for science, for research. Yep, they'll want to sleep with you after saying that. <laughs> yeah, and this robot dances for us. I mean, how much cooler can this robot be, seriously? Prince Orion is super thrilled about that as well. Oh, I'm so excited for these two to finally woohoo. <laughs> I never knew that was really a thing, so that's pretty exciting. I think we can also woohoo in the uh, time traveling portal thingy majiggy so yeah we should do that as well sometime before we leave and i think as well i do have the rest of the series pretty much planned out it is going to be ending rather quickly but i do have a lot of plans and i have a certain way of how i want to end this let's play and it's actually really coming close to ending, which is kind of surprising me because I thought this Let's Play would go on to maybe 20, 25 parts, but I think we are kind of ahead of schedule, so... Ooh, competent cleaner. We need a bug. Okay. I think Celeste has quite a few bugs, so we can definitely get her to help us out while he creates the, the little chip thing. Yep, Celeste can lend him a little buggy. A little buggy. <laughs> okay, this thing's gonna be pretty cool as well. Hopefully there will be enough, um trait slots as well to actually give the competent cleaner to this little girl, boy, whatever it is. I'm not sure. Who needs a gender anyway? <laughs> Ooh, it looks like Prince Orion has a gambling skill. I never knew that. I guess there is a casino though on planet Vesna, so it does not surprise me too much that he must have went over there a few times to work on his gambling skill. Maybe he enjoys it. He really does not need the money per se, so he must just enjoy the thrill of of throwing your money away, I guess. <laughs> so he did improve his bot building skill. I guess we should have really worked on our bot building skill before we started to make a robot. But honestly, I was so, so, so excited. I really did not want to wait any longer. I think she is so adorable. And she is now friends with Celeste. So I think Celeste was very, very, very thankful for her little robot. And that way too, Celeste has a friend too for when she does go back to, we could make our own plum bots. Okay, I guess we needed to have the skull a little bit before we could do it. I'm not sure, but either way, I'm happy with this little chicky. <laughs> but yeah, so I am kind of curious to see as well. So when they do go back, yeah, they are going to woohoo now. Yep, we're going to woohoo inside of the very creepy egg. <laughs> but yeah, so when they do go back to Planet Vesna, I wonder what will happen to these guys. Like, will they go their separate ways? And um, maybe this little robot will actually become part of their household, if you know what I mean. Maybe they will live together. He wants to create a plum bot, but dude, we already created one. I'm not going to make another one. Although, I think our little robot Sim, I think she might need a little friend eventually. Oh, can robots fall in love? That would be very, very exciting. Oh my god, I would love it so much. Yep, here they go, woohooing inside of the huge humongous egg. What a romantic location. <laughs> Oh, Michael. Michael is, um, 
Yeah, Michael, he's becoming a bit of a nerd. So if you guys remember in the beginning of this part as well, Michael is not that good of a man. He has been spying on both Celeste and the prince, kind of keeping an eye on the prince as well and trying to figure out what they were up to. And he has been telling um, the lackey of the queen, her lover, I forget his name, but she has, but uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but Michael has been telling him everything to do with Celeste and the prince. So yeah, Michael is a bit of a spy, I guess. He has been bribed a lot of money to do this. And yeah, they have no idea. Celeste and Orion, they have no idea that Michael is really this devious. They thought he could, uh, they thought they could trust him. Yeah, we do have a little spot for this. That's good. Yay, that is awesome. So I might pick back up in a moment. I do love all of the traits though. Yeah, this one actually has quite a bit of traits. That's pretty cool. So I'll probably pick back up in a moment once these guys get a little bit of energy and stuff. Okay, so it's a little bit later in the night where Sarah, our freaking general, she is telling ghost stories to the whole base camp. It's oddly endearing, isn't it? And I love how Michael is just sitting down there acting so innocent even though he is being no good. Even though he is up to no good, he is betraying both Celeste and Orion as well. So Rosira, she did win and lose the trivia challenge uh, all at the same time, I guess. <laughs> and I love how our little rule thought is just sitting down here watching TV with us. She is so cute. She looks so derpy. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, what I love about Rosira as well is that she is a tough, a tough, strict kind of woman. But I think by being on planet Earth, I think she's actually having more of a softer side. I think she is coming more in terms with her softer nature, if that makes sense. And I think she is realizing that the people here are also nice. And I think she is beginning to realize to let go of her guard, to let down her guard a little bit more as well. So I think maybe a little eventually I might have to buy this little robot some sort of battery power machine thing. I have no idea what to really use for it, but okay, no matter how many times he tried. Okay, good job, Rosera, good job. <laughs> but yeah, I have no idea how to really charge up this little robot, so I might have to buy some sort of little machine to try to charge it up. So I'll probably do that off camera because I don't want our little robot to die. Do they die if they have no battery power? I have no idea. <laughs> I hope they don't. That would be super depressing to kill our cute little chicky here. Um, okay, Celeste, you are going to... Let's see, you're going to shock a bra with the robot, try to bond with her a little bit more. I mean, she is new to the house, so she might be a little bit nervous to be around all of these humans slash aliens, I guess, in this space camp. We could probe the robot, <laughs> but I think that would be kind of awkward, no offense. I think it would be just a, just a little bit, honestly. Oh, there's another robot over here. Yeah, he's the guy with the little cheetah print. Aw, I wish robots could fall in love. He looks so groovy. He would be awesome to fall in love with, honestly. <laughs> yeah, we're going to introduce ourselves. He is so cute. I'm just assuming that he's a boy, I guess. These two are seriously wanting to woohoo yet again. That is a strong grip, isn't it? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I think you almost broke the robot's arm. No offense there, Sin. But yeah, these guys want to woohoo upstairs in the bed. So yeah, they're kind of acting this way in front of Michael. So that is kind of why Michael can tell that they are all over each other. And Celeste and Orion, they really think that they can trust the people in the space camp. They, they know the general is definitely trustworthy and they know that Amira and Myra and Michael, they thought that Michael was this trustworthy guy as well. But yeah, it turns out he's a bit of a snitch, to be honest. Um, hopefully nothing more bad will come out of this. Um, okay, looks like they're... what? Oh, he has been caught woohooing in public. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. The big giant egg. It ruined our plan to woohoo. Oh god, this is so not good. <laughs> Okay, okay, I guess maybe later I will... I'll let these two woohoo, <laughs> and then maybe I'll invite out Celeste's dad, and maybe even Micah, Celeste's half-brother, and maybe we can do some bonding and stuff like that to repair our relationships and just to further become closer. Okay, so I have Celeste and her father. They are having yet another duel to the death. <laughs> but oh my god, I love that Celeste can finally show off her powers to someone of her own kind. Oh! What? 
Oh jeez, he disappeared. That sucks. <laughs> I think I might invite him out again as well as Micah. Okay, so Micah is here, and I definitely think Micah really does tick to the prince. He says, well, I cannot believe those rumors could be so vicious. Prince Orion, you are okay in my book. <laughs> so yeah, I think this kid definitely idolizes the prince. It's definitely something out of a fairy book to have an alien on this planet. He never knew aliens really existed, so to have an alien, let alone a friggin' prince here, he can't help but look up to a Prince Orion. He can't help but just admire him and want to be just like him. However, Celeste, on the other hand, her and Micah, yeah, they don't get along that great. Celeste doesn't really like kids all that much. I mean, she... She's kind of indifferent towards kids. She would rather scold, scold? <laughs> she would rather um, scold them or punish them than really like befriend them. She's just very awkward around children, which I don't blame her. She has no idea how to really act around kids. And yeah, she definitely has to apologize to the child as well. So yeah, Prince Orion, he's definitely more nurturing than what Celeste is. That is definitely, that is definitely the case here. <laughs> so yeah, she was begging for his forgiveness. So I do hope that they will be able to get along a little bit better. Yeah, see the prince, he definitely knows how to get along with kids. I think the prince would honestly make a good dad if the time ever came. And the prince, he does love kids as well. He always wanted to be a father, and I really do think Prince Orion would make an excellent, excellent, loving, supportive father. So thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so, so, so much. I'll be talking to you guys in the next part. Can't wait to read your comments. Bye!